Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about <clears throat> Friday the 13th. Uh, now, I've talked about this franchise quite a bit. I saw, uh, spoke about the box set, the new Blu-ray box set that I got last year. Um, And honestly, I don't know <laughs> really what to say now that I'm here to finally talk about it because, you know, this is the one of the most iconic f horror franchises of all time. Um, of course, you know. Um, uh, Victor Miller said that Sean Cunningham, the director producer of this film, said to. Uh, said to him, you know, Halloween is making a lot of money, so let's rip it off. And so he did that. He saw Halloween, and he watched it and saw what the various beats of the movie and, like, the formula. And then he wrote Friday the 13th. And um, one thing that I like about this film is that it's in the woods. You know, it's far enough away from help. Yes, there are police, but, you know, you have to call them, and, you know, it's, like you have to wait all the while. There's, like, a, a killer on the loose, and, um, yeah, of course, uh, you know, I'm not really gonna give a big rundown on this, uh, film, or any of the other films, uh, in this little uh, series of videos I'm going to do, but uh, I want to just uh, express my thoughts as clear as I can. Um, hopefully to give a better sense as to why I really enjoy this franchise. Um, so, uh, now this is the Shout Factory edition. Um, this has both versions, uh, the R-rated and the uh, unrated course you get the uh, alternate cover the poster and um, I'm pretty much just keeping these as the they are because why not um, it, I, I really love this set this is a fantastic set um, of course it's fairly pricey as I've mentioned before so if you're unable to get this set, uh, it's understandable, but um, if you do have the money um, and you'd like to sort of buy something for yourself that is not necessarily, uh, you know, cheap, <laughs> you know, I think this would be a very good investment because you have the quality of the films, uh, the look and everything, and the special features that are included are excellent. Um, with that out of the way, um, about this movie, um, I saw this when I was uh, like 12, 13, um, around that age. It's around when I normally, I really got into horror films. Um, uh, I mentioned, I may have mentioned this on my channel, but I definitely mentioned it with Daisuke Beppu when we had our conversation uh, a few months back, um, where we, where I talked about the universal horror films, and I really love those. Um, I might talk about those one day, but uh, at that young of an age, I'm like six or seven, you know, I was sort of introduced to that, and also prior I saw Jaws, kind of, watched until the, before the first, uh, or before the uh, kid got attacked. I closed my eyes and kind of shut my ears also when uh, the woman was getting killed in the beginning, and then when Alex Kittner got killed, I'm like, nope. Uh, so the Universal Monsters were really, uh, to the extent at that point, uh, what I saw as horror films, you know, saw all of those, loved them, and I saw some Hammer movies on TV, and AMC, um, like, uh, 90s, or at least 2000s, 
had horror films, franchise and stuff. You know, stuff that I should probably watch at, a, at a, that sort of age. Friday the 13th, of course, was a um, feature there. But, of course, you know, it's a censored version. Because, you know, it was sort of like an all-day thing. Horror movies all month, all of October. Um, and occasionally, uh, as like 7, 8 and so flipping the channels, seeing what's on and all, and occasionally I would be like one of the horror films like Friday the 13th, and occasionally it would be like a sort of like a moment where there's like a jump scare or somebody's getting killed, and for whatever reason, uh, oddly enough, out of context for uh, seeing any of this stuff, didn't really bother me, and I don't know why, maybe that's just sort of like... I don't know, it's just kind of odd and bizarre for me, I, uh, looking back, how, um, you know, I was so unsettled and couldn't watch Jaws, where for a good chunk of the film, you don't see the shark, and you hear this ominous music, and then, you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> I guess for that, less is more, but then seeing, like, uh, clips out of context for films like Friday the 13th, or Halloween, it doesn't totally, it, for whatever reason, stuff like that just didn't really get to me much. I mean, maybe I would, might have go, oh, but that would have been it. I just might have done that at most, but it was sort of like a, just a general jolt of surprise, you know. Not that you're necessarily scared, but, you know, you didn't necessarily expect it, because especially if you're just flipping through the channels, you might actually actually uh, forget uh, what month it is for a moment. Like, oh yeah, it's October, so there was all these movies and stuff. And then, um, yeah. Uh, so f from that early age, that's sort of my f first glimpse at Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, seeing like Alice uh, running through and seeing like dead bodies of her friends, for instance, which is, of course, now I know is at the end of the film. But at the time, I had no clue, and I actually didn't get to... I didn't keep watching, because I was in the mood to watch something else, but it wasn't a horror film, because I wasn't totally into horror yet, obviously, so uh, I kept uh, scrolling through channels till I found something of interest. Um, so stuff like that is what I saw. And then, of course, years later, when I watched Friday the Thirteenth, sort of memories of mine of like, oh wait, I saw like this part or that part. When I was younger, and um, it's always interesting, you know, of course, to in retrospect uh, when you finally see a movie all the way through for the first time, then you remember you saw parts of it here and there. Um, so that's always, um, I think that's always a, that's something that's interesting, uh, at least for me, you know, just to look back and be like, wow. Uh, and how the film itself, because then you could kind of before, and if you hadn't just seen a part or two of the movie, you then kind of might fill in the rest of the movie of what happened up to to that point, and then what happens afterwards, and then, of course, the reality of what happened is not what you have made up. Your imagination can kind of run away. So, um, finally watching Friday the 13th, I was like 12 or 13, it was quite something. It was a very, uh, I was really excited, because I'm like, I'm really getting into horror films. I saw Halloween prior in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, of course, saw Jaws prior, years prior, and Silence of the Lambs a year after Jaws, so I was slowly working my way up into the slasher genre, more or less, and so once I saw Friday the 13th, there was just something about the film that I'm like, I definitely need to see the sequels of this. Oddly enough, not so much for Halloween. I don't know why. I mean, of course, I saw the sequels to Halloween, but 
I think with Halloween, there was just something that I kind of just liked of how that film ended with this um, uh, ambiguous ending of, you know, spoilers for Halloween, um, for anybody who hasn't seen it, but where did Michael Myers go and what will happen? I kind of liked that angle, whereas with this film, it seemed like a one and done thing. You know, there's really not much left for the sequel. Uh, spoiler again for this film, um, but, uh, you know, Jason Voorhees is not the killer. The killer is Mrs. Voorhees. Um, and uh, it's been said that, uh, you, know, you know, in the film that Jason drowned, and we see the moments of Jason in the lake drowning, and it was all the camp counselor's fault, because, uh, you know, he wasn't a very good swimmer, they should have been watching him, but they were too busy making love, and also later on, it was like, you know, to just explain further that, you know, Jason was picked on, and so all these things together made Mrs. Voorhees angry, and she went and killed people, and that, as Betsy Palmer has said, uh, in various interviews here and even elsewhere that you can find on the internet that, uh, you know, people liked Mrs. Voorhees and she wondered why people liked her and they said because they understood that she lost her child and she basically didn't want any other child to possibly go through the pain that she went through uh, going to a camp where camp counselors will likely leave leave and go and you know have sex uh, do drugs drink alcohol basically do anything but watch over the kids and so in that aspect that's what seemed to be what people liked about her um, of course you know Jason you know is in the film but he's not the killer everybody be thinks of hockey mask and machete which does happen but that's later with this film, you know, with how everything uh, leads up to the eventual reveal, it's quite interesting as a twist, especially if, you know, uh, <clears throat> like me, you haven't seen it, and then you you know of Jason and the hockey mask, and so when it's a bit of a surprise to find out that, oh, this woman, you know, Mrs. Voorhees, Jason's mom was the killer in the first film, it's kind of like, wow. You know, even kids know Jason just because of the hockey masks around Halloween time. So when one watches it for the first time, uh, you know, they don't have a whole lot of uh, knowledge of the franchise outside of those basic things associated with Jason. It can be quite uh, uh, surprising in a good way. And then, of course, you know, there's some questions as to, oh, how is Jason alive and such? And I'll get to that when, you know, part two uh, comes along uh, next time. Uh, but I really, uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, the performances are very good. Um, you know, for horror films, especially of this time, um, can have some corny, cheesy writing, corny, cheesy acting, and it seems fairly pretty realistic in the sense of how uh, uh, teenagers, early 20s, uh, uh, people would would be at this, in this uh, sort of environment of uh, getting uh, a camp ready for, you know, and for some weeks until the kids come and they'll be the counselors and everything and yeah just what they do before that and uh, yeah I just uh, I just really liked this I liked how the execution and um, you know this is a a film that is fantastic I really really I enjoy it it's you know, 
effects by Tom Savini. It, uh, it's all great, and uh, I just, you know, I could go on and on about it, but, uh, you know, I kind of want to just give my uh, experience of watching this for the first time and prior to what my horror experience was like. And how I basically just sort of gradually work, work my way up into the slasher subgenre of horror. Um, I really uh, find these movies really, uh, really interesting and really fascinating. Every time there's word of a new Friday the Thirteenth, uh, I'm always curious as to will something happen or will there not be, but. You know, because of the situation regarding this film, future films are sort of on hold. I've covered that already, but I thought it was at least good to acknowledge the um, uh, what has been going on because of you know this the, the copyright of this film, and now like thirty-five years later, the writer can try to gain ownership of it. And it's only in America, you know, United States, uh, maybe North America now that I think about it. It's been a while since I've really looked uh, at this little suit that's going on. <laughs> little suit, yeah, no. The suit that's been going on for quite some time. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, obviously hope it gets resolved as fast as possible so maybe a new movie or two can happen in the near future uh, but who knows um, uh, I understand there are people who uh, prefer other horror franchises and hey I get it you know people like Halloween uh, or Texas Chainsaw Nightmare on Elm Street Scream uh, you know Hellraiser, they're fantastic films uh, uh, with those franchises. Um, but for me, I've always been really into Friday the 13th. Um, the way the film ends, there's just something like, I wonder how, uh, how Jason fits into this then. You know? I think that was my big in intrigue. And... Uh, I just, I, that really got me into wanting to see the sequels. Um, uh, whereas the ambiguity of Halloween's ending, of him not being uh, in the front lawn anymore, I like that more. But, uh, you know, again, that's me. Uh, yeah, I just love this film. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, want people to, uh, I guess for my people who have followed this channel for all the years and me mentioning Friday the 13th, making some videos about it here and there, just trying to give more clarification as to why I like this franchise in particular. Um, maybe that gives some insight of, to a degree with this film. Um, but of course also, uh, Kevin Bacon was in this movie, one of the early films before he became a well-known star. <clears throat> Prior to this, uh, he was just he was in Animal House, uh, but he got to do more with this film, and yeah, it's 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 a really uh, just a fantastic film. In my opinion, um, I know a lot of critics didn't like it, like uh, Cisco and Ebert. Uh, they never liked any of these films during their lifetime that they saw. And yeah, that's really all I have to say. Uh, you know, the critics didn't really like this, but the audience pretty much did and has and have for over 40 years. I saw this film on the big screen last year, as I mentioned, uh, 
when talking about my the box that I got. And that was a great experience. That was fantastic. That was a great way to celebrate the 40th anniversary of uh, uh, of not just this film, but the franchise. And uh, yeah, I would love to see more of that uh, at some point in the future. It'd be kind of cool if, like, for the at least for the first four or so, for, for their 40th anniversary, it'd be cool to be able to have those on the big screen. Love to see part two on the big screen, um, and three and four. Uh, also, um, but yeah, uh, I really enjoy this film. I think it's fantastic and excellent. I do think the sequels do help uh, help the strength of this film. This is a good foundation to um, to start with, but. Had the sequels not gone the way that they did, I think it's possible that this film would have just been seen as a, after a while, just a knockoff on Halloween, and uh, there are some tropes that people always associate with this series, uh, particularly uh, sex and stuff, which, you know, having 12 movies and that being a good, you know, vocal point, focal point of certain aspects which you know still lead to some characters getting killed off uh, because of uh, uh, doing such activities you know that's just you know that just uh, sort of happens and uh, unfortunately for uh, those who you know have sex in these films and then die but that's part of the horror formula uh, anymore. So it didn't in, the, this franchise did not invent that, but because of how many films there are, as well as how popular they are, and how the main killer in the in this franchise is so iconic, it's kind of I think it kind of makes sense as to why it, this franchise is associated with uh, such cliches you know they embrace the cliches of that in the those things being in the horror genre but they did not invent them obviously but yeah it's my thoughts on friday the 13th um hope you enjoyed uh, hearing my uh, experience with this movie and then my desire of w wanted to see what came after it um so next week I will uh, continue with part two. I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. Hope you all have a great week. And I'll see you all next time.